Hello there, welcome along again. This is another tutorial from tipsquirrel.com. As always, I point out I'm not a trainer, but I like to pass on any tips and tricks that help me. Today I'm going to be looking at the eyedropper tool, so let's get cracking. Over here in the tools page you'll find the eyedropper tool. You can press I on the keyboard to get to it as well. Okay, now then, as I go on to the image with the eyedropper tool, you can see up in the info palette, which I've got open up on the right hand corner, the information about what lies beneath my eyedropper tool. Now, as I go around, you can see that they change both in RGB and CMYK. Now, if I come over here to the palette options, and it's just off screen, I apologize for that, but there is a drop down menu that says palette options. I can change what I'm seeing up here in this info palette options. Okay, I'm quite happy with the way they're set at the moment, so I'm going to click OK. And you can see that I've got the uh, X and Y coordinates as well, um, which might help me if I was trying to locate a certain point. Now, what well, the information that's being shown is governed by the sample size, which we have at the top left hand corner. At the moment, my sample size is set by a 5x5 five five average. This means that Photoshop is looking underneath the eyedropper tool at a 5x5 five five square and taking the average of the colors it finds to, to display what the uh, RGB figures are. Now, if I was to click, you'll see that it changes the color um, of my foreground color, and you can see that down in the uh, swatches here or over in my color palette. And I can keep doing that as often as I like, it's changing away. And that's by a 5x5 five five average. Now I can change this to a 3x3 three three average, 11x11, 11 11, 31, etc. But there's also a point sample. A point sample means whatever one pixel lies underneath the eyedropper tool, that's what it's going to change to. Now that's what you usually find is the default. I would strongly recommend that you change it to 3x3 three three or 5x5 five five for general use. And the reason for that is if you're using a point sample and you're working on an image like I am, at the moment, the dark areas perhaps may have some noise in them and uh, you'll be clicking the noise and you won't get a true representation of the color you're looking for. Also as well, you can see there's lots of different shades going through uh, this squirrel's body. So, you know, you get a nice average. Okay, so let's have a look at modifier keys now. So we've got the eyedropper tool and if I press the Alt key and click, You'll see that I'm changing the background color now. There's a gray, and if I move over to the squirrel's head, you'll see that I get the, the red head there. Okay, so that's using the Alt key. Now there's one other modifier, and that is the Shift key. Now what the Shift key does is changes the uh, cursor to a little sort of bullseye with a plus as around the eyedropper. And what that does then is I can click somewhere, and it puts a reference point down. And using that reference point, over in the info page, you see we've got reference point number one and give us the RGB uh, figures for that. Now I can use up to five of these, so I'll just put five down, uh, four down rather. And there you go, all four are displayed over in my info panel. To get rid of them, if I just hold down the shift key, you'll see, and hover over the top of it, you'll see that the, the cursor changes and I can just drag them off the screen once I'm done. And there we go, and that is the eyedropper tool. Quite a helpful tool, but one that's often overlooked. For more tips and tricks, go to tipsquirrel.com where you'll find a lot of great trainers who write a lot of good tutorials, and I'm indebted to them all. Don't forget, you can always comment on any of the articles posted. We'd love to hear from you. 